This video is for section 11.5 linear regression. So in this line we're going to find out how to put what we call a least square regression line through our scatter plot. And um, we're going to get the slope and the y-intercept for that line. So then, oops, sorry about that. We can use it to make predictions. So um, line of best fit or least square regression line. It's abbreviated LSRL. So best fit means this is kind of how the line is calculated. So if we have all these scatter plot dots, it looks, um, it puts a line through the scatter plots to try to minimize this distance. So the best fit means the sum of the squares, these squares, or the vertical distance from each point to this line is as small as it can be. So it's putting a line through all the points so it's as close as possible to each point. So this is what you get, an equation of a line. This is the same one we had in Algebra 1, y equals mx plus b. So our a here is the same as our m, so that's our slope. And just like in Algebra 1, the b is our y-intercept. So this is where our line crosses the y-axis, right? That's b. Always x is 0 and you have a y-value. That's your y-intercept. So a is the slope and that tells us how much y is predicted to change for every increase of one unit in x. That's important. So whenever we're describing slope, we say for every one increase in x, what happens to y? And then b is the y-intercept, and that tells us what is the y, what is the output, when x is 0. So we'll answer some questions in context using the slope and the y-intercept. So we're going to um, go through in this video how to find this least square regression line in the calculator. Um, I have in my calculator right now the data for the candy bar problem, which we've looked at, woo, which we've looked at many times. So if you want to follow along on your calculator and check your numbers, what you're going to want to do is go to your stat, which I'm already there, and 1, and in your L1, L2, you're going to want to put that candy bar data, because that's what I have in there right now. So to find your slope and y-intercept, or your least square regression line, the steps are in your notes. So once you have your data in there, so you could pause the video and put that data in your calculator. But we're going to go to stat again. So the stat button is what I just pressed. And then we're going to go over to Calc. So you're going to use your arrow and over to Calc. And if you notice, menu item 4, linear regression, and it shows AX plus B. So this is the same place we went to get our R value, our correlation coefficient. So we're going to look at that again. And then we want it to use list 1, list 2, so that all looks good. So I'm just going to enter, 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 enter. And then I'm going to get this data. Now remember, this is the same place we found the R value. But what we didn't talk about before was this A equals and B equals. So what this A is, is for AX plus B, just like it explains here, my A is 2.82900. So this is your slope, and your B is your Y-intercept. So this, in your notes, it kind of explains what you'll see here. So A is the slope, B is the y-intercept, R is the correlation coefficient. So if you flip over to this example 1, there we go, and we can now write an equation for a line, which I've sketched here, I'll show you how we do this on the calculator in a minute, for a line that would go through our scatter plot. So this is our same sketch of our scatter plot for this problem that we've looked at a few times. And then an equation of a best fit line through there 
we're going to get from these values. So the first A in your note says find the equation of the least square regression line round to three decimal places. So these are the values I pulled off the calculator. So the most important ones here are the A and B. So A is 2.829 rounded to three decimals. B is 300.040 rounded to three decimals. And this makes sense. If you look at my output data here, it's in the 3 to well, all the way up to eight, almost 800 range. So this y-intercept of 300 makes sense. So to write an equation for this best fit or least square regression line, it would be y equals the slope or the a. So this is ax plus b. 2.829x plus 300.040. That's my y-intercept. Okay, so then it's part B says, what is the slope of your line? So the slope is 2.829. And then it says, interpret the slope in context. So remember when we're talking about slope, we want to always talk about a single increase in our input or our x. And in this example, our input is sugar. And our output or our y's is calories. So what we said was this means that for each additional gram of sugar, so remember for an increase of 1 in x, so each additional gram of sugar a candy bar has, we can predict that the number of calories, right, that's your y, in the candy bar will increase by 2.829. So when x increases by 1, in our example, when sugar increases by one gram, y will increase by 2.829. Or in our example, calories, hmm, I think I spelled that wrong, but you get the idea, will also increase by 2.82. Nine. Okay, now let's look at some instructions here for having your calculator graph this line. Um, so here they are, but I'm going to show you this on the calculator. But right now you might want to put this little arrow after this L1, L2, put an arrow and write the word store reg. EQ. This is store required equation. I think these directions will be a little more clear if you add that line there. Okay, so let's look at this. So here I am at the screen where I got my slope and my y-intercept and my r value. And so what this says is we want to continue through this. So let's just review how we got to this point. So this was stats. Whoop, my calculator just turned off. Stat, and we did calc. Then we did four for least square regression line. And then we entered, entered, entered. Right, and we got all of that information. Okay, so now let's do that again, but we're gonna change this time. So we're still gonna go stat button, and we're gonna go over to calc. And we're going to choose 4, linear regression, ax plus b. And we're going to hit enter. So now we're telling it to use list 1, use list 2, and then frequency list we're going to kind of skip over. But see where it says store required equation? I want to tell it to use that, y equals ax plus b, use those values when I ask it to graph. And I'm asking it to graph that line. So here, I want to get my cursor down to that, and then I want to go to these steps in your notes where it says VARs, which stands for variables, Y VARs, and function. So right here, I want to hit this VARs button, which is right here. So at that store required equation, I want to hit VARs. And then I want to go over to Y VARs. 
So I'm telling the calculator, please use this y equals ax plus b equation that you just found for me. So when it says function, I'm saying, yep, I would like you to use a particular function, so hit enter. And then I'm saying, yeah, for y1, I would like you to put my least square regression line in there. So I want to hit enter again. And then see, it has my y1 in there for the required equation. And then I think I have to hit enter again. And now if I look at, if I go to y equals, just like when I'm graphing, you'll notice it put that 2.829, there's my slope, it put that y equals ax plus b equation in the y1 slot. So then if I hit graph, I'm going to get my scatter plot with that regression line. Okay, so this is a lot of steps. I recommend you pause this video, rewind, practice this a couple times in your calculator. Make sure you can get that least square regression line. All right, now let's finish looking at this example. So I'm going to flip the page here. Part C says, what is the y-intercept of your least square regression line? So I copied this line up here so I would have this information. Remember, this is my y-intercept. That's my b. y-intercept is where my line crosses or intersects the y-axis. So x is always 0 at that point. So this is my y-intercept, 300.040. This means that if a candy bar has zero grams of sugar, so picture your graph. Here's my least square regression line. This is my y-intercept. So at this point, x is zero, because I went over zero, and I went up 300.040. So this means that if a candy bar has zero grams of sugar, x is zero, because that's my x-axis. We can predict the number of calories the candy bar will, be, will have is 300. So it already has some calories, even if the grams of sugar are zero. So where would these extra calories be coming from? Well, probably from the fat. Huh? Candy bars have other stuff in them besides sugar that contribute to the calories. So now they're going to ask you to use this equation of the line that we just calculated. So I'm going to rewrite it here to answer some question. So a king size Butterfinger has about 450 grams of sugar. Use your least square regression line equation to predict the number of calories. So it's asking me to find y calories when x equals 50 grams. Okay, so I'm just going to plug into my equation. Solving for y, my slope is 2.829. My input, my x, is 50 plus 300.040. So let's just put this in the calculator. See what we get. So I'm going to do 2.829 times 50 plus 300.040, and I get 441.490. So y equals 441.49. Story problem requires a story answer. I have to have some units on here. So this would actually be y is calories. So this would be my answer. 50 grams of sugar for input yields 441.49 calories of output. Okay? So now here they say, this is using my line to predict this. Now here they tell me, well, a king size Butterfinger actually has this many calories, 514. Was the prediction you made too high or too low? Well, it actually has 514. We predicted 441. So our prediction was too low. Okay, so let's add the word prediction here. Prediction is too low by how much? By 514. 
minus 441.49 by 72.51 calories by 72.51 calories. Okay, so that was the answer to that. Why do you think this happened? Well, our least square regression line is based on the data that we had. It's not perfect. It doesn't contain the information about all candy bars. It's just a prediction. So that would be why this would happen. So there's lots of ways to say this. Um, our, oops, our equation is based on a small sample size. And so thus it's just an estimate. And you know, you could go on and on. Perhaps it's because the candies that we used have uh, different calories and sugar contents, but basically it's that our equation is based on just a sample of some candy bars and not all the candy bars. So now it says use your least square regression equation. Remember, that's this every single time to predict the number of calories in a candy bar that has 65 grams of sugar. So remember, this is x. Grams of sugar is always x or our input. So we're substituting in place of x in our equation 65 and we're solving for y. Well, let's put that in the calculator. So I have 2.829, that's our slope, times 65 calories or grams of sugar, sorry, plus 300.040 and I get 483.925. So 483, oops, 0.925 calories. Make sure you have units on all of your answers and pretty much all the problems in this whole unit. So if a candy bar has 65 grams of sugar, if x is 65, then my equation predicts that y, which is calories, will be 483.95. So I'm going to stop this video here and we'll look at example 2 in another video.